Welcome to this video for the simple bridge configuration for the LEGO Wave LEGO DLB 5-20 AC. So you've unpacked your units, plugged them into your PoE adapters and connected them to the network. The thing to be mindful of is these units are 24 volt not 48 volt, they won't just run straight off of a standard PoE switch. So you need to use the proper injectors, check that they're 24 volts before you plug them in. So when you've plugged in your two units and they've lit up, what the units are designed to do originally is to accept a DHCP address. So your router will be able to allocate an IP address for them. Uh, if I look into the leases that have been allocated here, I can see that the two units here, one and two, have been allocated the following IP addresses which is 88.49 and 88.50 which is great that means they're online so I can just simply open a browser and type in those IP addresses to get into the units so 192.168.88.49 little greet me with some prompts for my credentials let's go and get the other one 192.168.88.50 have is default credentials for these units are admin and admin 01 which you can do to log in there you can click on that to get in same with this one admin admin 01 And what you'll get when you turn it on the first time when you log in is you'll get this splash screen asking you to accept the user agreement and to select the country that you're working in. Um, two reasons for this, obviously they got to accept the terms. When you select the country from the drop down list here what you're actually doing is agreeing to the power levels of the unit. So you're standing that your regulatory levels are the UK levels um, and you click change. Uh, it saves and then it will let you in the unit. So we do the same on both units. So I do agree and we are in the UK. Change. So once you've got that up and running, you should be greeted with the standard GUI. It just takes a second for it to save those credentials, save that configuration. And then what we should be greeted with once it refreshes is a standard screen where we can actually configure the bridge. So the bridge is a relatively simple thing to configure on here. There's lots of tweaking and, and bits you can do which I'll show you, but just to get the actual bridge up and running is quite a simple exercise. We just wait for this to clear. There you go, one, and this one's just coming. Just takes a second. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do with all of these is check the firmware. On the top left here, you've got the firmware version. You can click update here. You can check for an official firmware and it tells you happy days, we're up to date, we've got the latest firmware. You need to make sure they're both on the same firmware and they're both updated. Check again. Okay, that's great. <clears throat> so now we're happy. The um, first place we're going to go is the COG settings. And the simple, very simple, quick, down and dirty way of getting this thing up and running is that you just change one of these devices. By default, they're both set to what we call a station, which is here. Uh, but what we want is one to be a station and one to be an access point. So you're almost dictating master and servant, right? So we'll say that, just for example, we'll change the second one here, and we'll change this particular one to an access point. You leave it on pole, I pole three, so they're both, one is um, a station on iPole 3, one is an access point on iPole 3. And then we're going to hit this button up here, save. What you have to be careful of when you do this is that you are taking two standalone network devices and then if, when you're linking them via the bridge, you're going to make a network loop. So it's very important to make sure that you disconnect one of the access points from your network switch as you hit the save button. So I'm going to hit save and I'm going to save that and I'm going to now physically disconnect the Ethernet cable on one of the devices. 
if the bridge comes up as I'm expecting it to, you should be able to see both of the devices across the bridge once it saves. And that means you can still access your configuration. But if you if you don't disconnect the network cable, what you'll do is you'll make a loop and both the screens will vanish and white out on you. You won't be able to configure anything because it just won't know where it is. So let's just check this one. This one's still okay, it's a station. This one's an access point, and now what we've got is it's come back up, and I'm actually configuring this over the wireless bridge. Now, how you can check that on the two units is you see one up here, we've got a little signal strength meter, a little little arcs that says it can see one station. That's important to recognise because if you do a point to point or point to multi point, it will tell you how many stations it can actually see. Uh, and the, on the second screen here, you have the signal strength. So that's telling me that my bridge is too strong. So I'll move my bridge a little way out of the way. And there we go. That's going to drop down a little bit. And that's now better. Yeah. Obviously, we're working in a lab environment, so the access points are too close together. But you can see that basically, once you have this signal thing here, and you can see that you're connected to a station, your wireless bridge is up. So we are. A functioning bridge I'm connecting to one of the units via an Ethernet cable on the network and I'm connecting to the second unit for configuration across the bridge and the thing to, to think about with that is if you're going to make some changes always work on the furthest node away so if you're going to um, change the IP address what have you always do the one that you can't see so the furthest one at the end of the wireless bridge because you won't be able to get back into it when you've done it so for example if I'm going to go into the settings here again now you've got network configuration now this has currently been set to a dynamic IP like we talked about in the first instance but you can very simply go into static IP down on the connection here change the settings you want your IP method uh, your address, your subnet, your gateway, and any proprietary DNSs you might want to use, or you just might want to use it as a dynamic and leave it like that. That in its default state will work as a wireless bridge and will run and carry traffic as expected, or as a bit of cable. Um, and then it's basically from there on, we'll go into another video, we'll give you a little bit more information on some of the more complicated settings with encryption and changing of network addresses and all that fun stuff. Thanks very much.